Welcome back. Welcome to another edition of Nain's Shorts. Uh, did we do one last week? Yeah, we did, right? <laughs> I can't tell, man. I'm so busy. Holy crap. But we're back from the holidays. It was a long weekend. Hopefully you guys had fun. Everyone was safe. Did you have fun? What do you say? I was safe. You were safe? Good. See? Everyone was safe. We carried around sticks. That's why. Um, and that's how we keep ourselves safe. Well, the reality is we don't actually carry around sticks. So we definitely harbor the idea that we're the weapon itself. The stick, it's a tool. It's an extension of what we do. But in order to start really processing that, how do we go about transitioning from the idea of swinging a stick to becoming something you can use without a stick? And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to uh, start off with something very rudimentary because we do use sticks and they are teaching tools, but we don't see them so much as weapons because we don't want the students to set their minds on, oh, this is how I swing the stick. The swing of the stick is kind of the happenstance of the mechanics. So we got to learn the mechanics first and the sticks are a great way to do that. So that's just the way we've gone about this. So if he gives me an angle one, right? Right to the face, right? I get hit, good. So. He gives me an angle one and I move out of the way. Ooh. All right, so what do I do? Well, I just stepped off to an, at an angle, what we call our female triangle, and I got out of the way, but that's not necessarily going to do it for me. So he swings again. Oh, this time I parry. Okay, good. I still haven't done much. All right, so that's the process. I just want to step. So now he swings again. Okay, now I'm doing more than just parrying and stepping off. To the side. What am I doing though? I'm literally just placing my weapon behind his. All right, so for you, if you do any sticks or you do any sort of weapon stuff, what is that to you? Is it reminiscent of something? Have you seen this before? In some version, some place. Right? <laughs> it's not anything new, guys, and, and that's what I'm, I'm trying to point out is that I'm not trying to say that, oh, this is what we do because it's our thing. No, it's been done before. Other people have done it. We've seen iterations of it. There's definitely ways that people use it more efficiently. But for us right now, it is just the teaching tool because the movement itself is then teaching us something. So let's break down. What are we learning? One, get the hell out of the way. Sounds dumb, right, to say out loud for martial artists, especially ones that have been training for a long time, but for a new student, it's a pretty viable thing. You don't want to get hit, move out of the way. You parry because you may not be fast enough. He's already swinging. Oh, shit! My movements happened after he already swung because I wasn't prepared for it. You may never be. So there's one aspect of the teaching process that then we can start exploring. Okay, how does the footwork actually help us and what are we doing with it? Just as an idea. So very simple rudimentary. The empty hand, he swings again, just the parry, right? Just I just want to make sure I know where that is and not here. Oh, if that's enough, I got grazed a little bit, that's fine, I'm okay. So another way of staying safe, not getting hit, primary thing. Again, ooh, <laughs> that became a hit and I wasn't even trying to hit him, but I hit his face. Why? Because look how close we are now all of a sudden. Because from his swing out here, all of a sudden, I close the gap completely. Now I have access to whatever it is that I need to do. Insert your particular strikes, whether it's boutiques, whether you're hitting with the puño, whether you're checking this, whether you're gonna just hook here and hit something else. But again, just an entry. Just an idea that somebody's swinging something at you. I don't wanna get hit, but I also want to do something so he doesn't hit me anymore or try to hit me anymore. So it's just a simple, Perry, put it over and place it. That's all you're doing. So now, your turn. You place it. Come on. I'll give you an angle one and you do the same thing. So they, they can see it on that side. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So step 11 and do that, right? Ooh, nice. He turned it right into a hit. All we really wanted him to do is bam. That's it. <laughs> Right? No, but that's right. the thing, is that the movement itself can become whatever the person needs it to be. For him, it made more sense for him to just hit me. Why not? 
you're in a fight. That's the most logical thing to do. Especially if you saw where it hit me, right in the temple. Which many martial artists will tell you that's a vital point. So you did something that you thought was correct based on a very simple movement. You progressed it to what you needed to for that particular moment. Now, I'm gonna give you another one again, one more time. Ooh, here you go. Now that's menacing as hell. Cause all I saw was that puño coming and that, that, that could be all she wrote. Cause even from here, what if I <coughs> attempt to do something? Oh, he has options all of a sudden. <laughs> and again, nothing that hasn't been done before, but now because we're going back and forth and exploring it off a very rudimentary idea or movement, then you can start finding places where you can insert the techniques that you have learned. Because they're all good techniques. And as long as the mechanics are sound and you're given a good understanding of what they're for, you can use them. But when and where? Now you have a bit of a template to do so. Or at least I believe this is a good way for you to develop a template so you can start using these things. But like we said at the beginning, we don't carry around sticks. So, it would make logical sense to then explore the same movements, the same template, but now, no sticks, no weapons. So, you can either give me a hammer fist, angle one, or a punch, it doesn't matter, right? Oh, look at that. Same movement. And once again. Okay. So, same movement as I did before, but now I don't have a stick, right? And no one's going to stand here, so... Yes, that's, that's true. No one's going to just stay here and let me do this, right? But for the sake of the demonstration, and thank you for that, by the way, this helps visualize. I took my step, I got out of the way, I parried, and then I just placed my hand behind his weapon. Okay, this is the weapon. This is what he was trying to hit me with, right? And then from here, I can into anything else, right? And into that. And that's just what happened because of how he reacted to what was happening. And that's just one of many things that I could possibly do, but the same movements, okay? Oh, now I went directly here. Soften you up here, then grab that and end with an elbow. Again, these are just ideas that are popping up. Now I feed you. What do you make of it? Oh, shit. <laughs> he totally changed it. And... I know it may look completely different, folks, but it, to us, it's still the same move because he parried. He just parried with the inside hand instead of the outside. And he went to my center instead of to my outside, like I did on this. But it's still a parry, and then he moved in. He moved his feet the same way, and he just mirrored what I did, but this is where it puts him. So the movements aren't specific to the things you're trying to do, rather, it's just, <laughs> it's just movement. What ideas you insert afterwards, that's depending on your training, depending on your level, depending on uh, your own life experiences, because they also affect what you do with it. He went on the inside, I went on the outside for the sake of the demonstration, he demonstrated something, and it's still the same thing though. It's a simple concept. And that's how we started off with, it's just first, it was just movement. Then what are you doing with the movement? Oh, I'm trying to get to the outside or behind their weapon. Now he throws another punch. Oh. <laughs> Good. Because now he understands, okay, now we can give each other a back and forth. So this then is the progression of you go into empty hands, something changes, you adapt. Another thing changes, you adapt. And little by little, we're feeding each other. So I feed him now. He does that. Oh, goddamn. <coughs> he got me completely off my center. I feed him one more time. Now I'm ready for it. Oh, and he threw the knee in. Ah, I should wear a cup for these things from now on, dude. No, I'm kidding. It's good. But again, now he gets to explore in real time what his responses would be. And from my end, I get to explore the things based on even my punch. Say, I'm the feeder, and he's just doing his thing. Go ahead, do that. There you go. Bam. Okay, I feed again. Now I know he can do something about it. 
So I'm going to keep going as well. So not only can he learn to adapt from the situation, but also myself off very simple movements. But is that all there is to it? Now we change weapons. Kniff. And again, can we do the same movement even though we've changed the range of what we're now using? We were using a stick originally, a bit longer range, now it's a knife, a bit shorter range. Before that we were doing empty hands. So all this has to then change the way that when we go about the space between us. He gives me that angle one again. Now I'm here. Now what can I do with this? A knife is a very specific tool in that it can do two things. It can cut and it can stab. So from here I can cut or I can stab. So now we have those variations that we can do because now we have to start thinking, okay, what am I cutting? So now we've evolved the same movement once again. What am I doing? Oh, I'm going to cut that bicep. Okay, that is going to disable that arm and then come back and cut the tricep. Now it's really disabled just in case that bicep cut wasn't, um, you know, deep enough. And from here I can go, I can take out the leg. Oh, now quads, I can kill. I can end him completely. Again, these are choices, just different variations. But that idea alone is giving me a sense of, okay, what are the vital points that then I'm attacking? I give you an angle one. Ooh, took out that elbow. Okay, would that be enough? Ah, that rib, and there goes the neck. I stopped it because it scared me. Um, <laughs> but that's where his head is. And now that's another idea introduced. And I say idea, not because um, these aren't viable attacks. They're, they're great, the, and the vital points. But that's the idea that kind of popped into my head is that now vital points. Now we put the weapons back down and now we add that concept into what we're doing. So it gives me a strike. Oh, I'm going to destroy that bicep the same way that I cut it. I'm going to do it with the elbow. So here, then the tricep. Now I'm using my close core weapon of elbows to get a similar result as I did with the knife. <coughs> so again, the knife became a learning tool to then start exploring, what am I really attacking? Karate. He hit me in the temple earlier today with the stick. That's a vital point. That's a great place to attack if you really want to cause some damage quickly. What are the other vital points that you can attack with a stick, with empty hands, with a knife? And by exploring all these different aspects under the same ideas, Movement, the same movement. We know it, he knows it, we can go back and forth with it, but now I can go beyond that because it is simple and we do get it now that I can start exploring, okay, what am I really, where are the vital points, what am I, okay, what if I, okay, there, okay. So again, he throws a punch, now I understand. I wanna end the fight completely. I hit him in his tricep underneath as I'm breaking his structure. And from here, you can go wherever you want. You can keep destroying the leg, you can go into take the back, you can take the choke. All the things that we know how to do, but many of which we learn to do statically because we had to learn the technique first. We had to know how to make it work properly. But now, now we can explore how to get there. We can explore how to then use them when somebody's <laughs> attacking you in the most rudimentary form. No, thank you. Uh, let's take a seat for a second. <clears throat> and is this the, the, the right way of doing things? Is, is this the, the best way of doing things? No. No, I, I wouldn't say that it is. Uh, simply because this works for what we teach. It may not work for what you teach. It may not work anywhere else, but it works for us. And, and ultimately that's what we want to do and that's why we do it the way we teach it. So whatever our students learn has to work for them. He did what he did because that works for his body type, for what he understands and what he knows. I did what I did because that's where my mind is. And neither of us looked the same, even though we were doing basically the same movements, but what it became later on, after that, that was to the individual. So for us, this became the way of doing things because that's what we noticed in people. 
So how do you, in your training, individualize the things that you do, the things that you know how to do well? What changes did you have to make to adapt them to the way that you move? Like, I know you have injuries, right? Yes. So how have you had to adapt everything that we've taught you to fit the way you do things? I have to be aware of my limitations mm -hmm. and my abilities. Okay. Sometimes that's adjusting, shifting the weight, or how high my arm can go, what, what have you. Yeah. And it's not easy, folks, because let's face it, as martial artists, we can be a little prideful. Oh, no, I can still move. I can still kick. I can still. And then you go home and you have to ice your entire body because it's sore as hell. Because you went harder than you probably should have. But that's what we do. We're kind of dumb that way. I know. Because I did all that. I have a fractured toe. And I was still moving the way that I was moving because I, I kind of forgot that I had a fractured toe. So I just sat down now and it started hurting a little bit. But we can't be that dumb. But again, this is just an example of how do we take something simple and then attach all the other things that we know, all the things that we know work. So we can then explore the possibilities. And ultimately, that's all we're trying to do is expand our own understanding of things so we can get more out of it. I don't know. What do you guys think? Good idea? Bad idea? How does it work for you? How do you go about doing it? And how would you improve on this idea so it works better for what you do? Because I would love to hear from you and I would love to get your input on what it is that really helps you figure stuff out on your own. Because at one point, we, I think we all have to do that. I mean, our instructors eventually pass away and we can't ask any more questions so we're left with what we know so how do we go about expanding beyond that all right so thank you very much for joining me on another one of Naeen Shorts thank you very much Eric for helping me out today and I'll see you on the next one no we're not saying anything about Luchi okay Luchi's just everywhere but again to the next one three two one